Joe Musket and his son Steve are working their harvester and bin hauler on this glorious autumn morning in the Homebush district near Mackay. The real harvest is still several weeks away. This morning, Joe and Steve are gathering planting material. These healthy sticks of cane have been specially chosen. The harvester cuts the cane into small pieces known as billets, which, once planted, will sprout a new crop. Today's task is a 15 hectare block that's been redesigned to fit with new industry standards in GPS guided control traffic farming. Fertiliser is applied subsurface as the billets are planted, minimising the risk of nutrient runoff during irrigation or rainfall events. Steve Musket acquired this 120 hectare homebush farm two years ago and with his father's guidance has been transforming it so it meets industry best practice. In this era of minimum till farming, it may be five years or more before the soil on this block is worked again. And that's good for productivity and the environment. With the controlled traffic farming system, we're using what we call a permanent bed situation. So those beds or that grow zone will always be the grow zone. The traffic lanes will always be the traffic lanes. And we're completely zero till from the time we plant the block through till when we replant to beans. So the only cultivation we do is when we prepare the beds for planting cane or planting our legumes or other crops. Otherwise it's, it's in a zero till situation. So you know, we've reduced tillage significantly and also that you know, shows on our bottom line because every time we till it costs money. Um, we're also leaving the soil vulnerable to you know, erosion and a whole range of other things. So you know, we're trying to minima minimise that as much as possible. As a student of agricultural innovation, minimising environmental harm and reducing the loss of costly farm inputs is at the heart of Joe Musket's farming philosophy. Already in the planning stages for Steve's farm is a low pressure overhead centre pivot irrigator, similar to the one that's delivering significant water use efficiency gains on the family's home farm at Oakenden. Put in two years ago, the centre pivot is 408 metres long and irrigates 56 hectares of cane land, including sloping blocks that were costly to irrigate using high pressure hoses. We're pumping up 25 metres head on top of the operating pressure of the high pressure gun, so it was, it was quite an expensive operation and a lot of labour as well to you know, to shift the irrigators, uh, to lay fluming on top of the ground and move the machines around. We really wanted to get the potential of the soil, all its, all its um, cropping potential, um, and we, we didn't want to limit it through the lack of water. Okay, And we knew with a centre pivot uh, machine operating on this country, we can give it you know, regular top ups because it, it only holds about 60 or 70 mils of water um, in, in its worst situation and probably about 90 mils in its best situation. With this machine we can basically optimise the growth um, of that particular crop. Imported from Nebraska in the United States, the Ranky Sugar Gator system is being modified to suit the specific demands of Joe's farm. And in the process it's delivering both improved energy efficiency and water savings. The design includes some serious technological innovation in the pumping shed where a dual motor system has been installed to cater for varying pressure requirements as the pivot moves up and down the slopes. It's phase one of a two-part project that includes targeted variable rate irrigation. What we've got here, this is our pumping unit that really supplies the water to the um, centre pivot. Um, we've got two 30 kilowatt motors supplying the centre pivot. Uh, the reason we've gone to two pumping units is to allow us to give us that flexibility when we do have the variable rate controller operating on this pivot, we'll be able to basically switch to one pump which would supply 20% of the machine. So we, we can manage the system from 20% of the supply right through the 100% uh, requirement to, to run the um, pivot. Basically both pumps have got variable speed control and that's what's uh, in, in this box over here. We've got a radio link which is the antenna that goes up the side of the shed which is linked, receives a signal from the outside of the pivot. We've got a uh, transducer there that reads the set pressure and through that controlling mechanism we can basically maintain the set pressure point as we move around the landscape. So as we go up the, the incline and then as we come down. 
and it'll basically rev these pumps up and down to suit that situation. So far, the centre pivot has cost about $220,000 to install. It'll cost a further $8,000 to complete the variable rate control system and take another technological leap forward in cane growing. The whole purpose of the variable rate controller is really allowing us to manage the area underneath the pivot to whatever crop class or, or cropping situation we've got. So as you can see, this is the area that the pivot covers and there's some 56 hectares under the pivot. Everything's planted right through. We've got, you know, row lengths from sort of 920 metres sort of down to about 600 metres in, in length. So if we've got a particular bed which may be fallow or it might be soybeans and we need, need to apply an irrigation or not, um, the variable rate controller basically allows us to be able to uh, manage that, that situation. We'd overlay a Google Earth map on this. We would determine the GPS reference points of that particular area that we wanted to apply or, or not apply water to. We would uh, write the software. It sounds complicated, but it's quite a simple um, operation to write the software to do that. And the, the pivot would then recognise those GPS coordinates uh, as the machine is travelling through and would, um, and if we were wanting a zero application on this particular area, it would turn the machine off as it travelled over that particular area and then it would, turn, it would turn that section of the machine off rather as it travelled through that area. Even before the variable flow system is introduced, the centre pivot is already delivering gains in energy and water use efficiency. It's a welcome outcome given sharp increases in both input costs in recent years. We, we simply are looking at the operation costs, you know, water efficiency and uh, power requirements and the pivots meeting those. When you compare it to a high pressure gun, just to give you some numbers, pumping cost to run uh, a high pressure gun is about $58 a megalitre and we've got this machine operating at about uh, $22, $23 a megalitre. That was the pumping uh, cost. This machine's about 98% efficient uh, in, in its application and uh, the irrigator's about 92% efficient. So, you know, we, we're certainly maximising everything that we can. And with uh, power uh, costs going up and, you know, we're talking that it's actually nearly um, tripled in five years and water doing uh, very similar. We need to do this to manage those particular inputs. Along with the water and energy savings, the new system is boosting on-farm productivity through a combination of the centre pivot's more reliable delivery of irrigation and the use of subsurface soil probes. Before irrigating, Joe checks the Mackay Area Productivity Services website on his smartphone. Soil probe measurements on his farm are graphically displayed, making it easy to schedule irrigation events. It's more than confirming your gut feeling. Um, generally, you know, uh, most guys look at the wilt point within the plant and then they trigger an irrigation. But what this is sort of demonstrating is that, you know, this is well before the plant is at wilt point, it really needs irrigation. And it's, it's about trying to maintain um, maximum growth uh, without stressing the plant out. And, and that's what the objective is. You know, we can, we can see that from what the graft is telling us. Through our probe, we know where the refill point is and we know what the fill point is. And, you know, if we're closer to the fill point, we would adjust our application relative to what the soil's requiring or the crop's requiring, you know. We haven't got that level of control with our, you know, with our high pressure guns. We just haven't, you know, it's just not easily done. So, um, you know, if, if we want to apply um, 40 mils to top up that profile, this machine will put on 40 mils over that whole area. You know, it's evenly distributed. So we can't do that with the high pressure guns or with the fire irrigation. And those results have exceeded Joe's expectations, more than justifying the cost of switching to a centre pivot irrigation system. We're in year two, so we've shifted one crop um, that's been managed through the uh, centre pivot because um, the centre pivot not only uh, gave us you know the potential to water this 56 hectares but the equipment we were using here uh, you know allowed us to manage the rest of the area um, quick more quickly so we could revisit and re-irrigate um, that land as you know as well so overall we budgeted on picking up about two tonnes at a hectare uh, and you know it was conservative but I mean 
we didn't want to really sort of, um, you know, exaggerate what the potential was. But after operating for one year, we actually picked up 10 tonnes of the hectare over the whole area. Now, some of that is relative to the season that we had, because we had a really good growing season in 2014. But nevertheless, I think we can maintain much better than two tonnes of the hectare. I'm, I'm sort of thinking now that we can probably maintain somewhere between five and, and ten. Uh, tonnes of the hectare and that changes the, the, the whole parameters of our repay, repay back timeline. The machine will definitely pay itself back in under 10 years. In the meantime there is a strong focus on limiting the loss of costly farm inputs like fertilisers and chemicals that could also harm the Great Barrier Reef catchment. The irrigation dam that's used to supply the pumping system which takes its water via a gravity feed from the Kinchant Dam also doubles as a sediment trap that captures runoff from close to 40 hectares. We've got two waterways which basically catch the water coming off um, these parcels of land and basically run the water straight into the dam. Now if there's any sediment that comes out of that uh, landscape it's, it's actually caught in this dam here and then um, you know every sort of 15 to 20 years we would actually clean all the, the debris out of that um, and we'd be uh, right to go again. So it's been working uh, here for uh, probably more than 30 years uh, and been doing a really good job of it. So uh, basically we're controlling whatever runs off that land uh, before it goes into the catchment, before it goes out of the overflow and down into the river systems. A Nuffield scholar who's studied farming practices worldwide, Joe Muscat is quick to point out that what's good for the environment is also ultimately good for a farmer's bottom line. It all begins with efficient use of water and smart irrigation. I took over the family farm from my father and you know other family members um, and I'm hoping to be able to pass that uh, down to, to my son. We try and manage our soils um, so that we can maintain our soils. Um, obviously if we're um, looking after what's coming off the property uh, from the environmental perspective, we're certainly uh, keeping all the inputs you know, which cost money on the area that we're cultivating. I believe it's very important that we're not um, losing soil, we're not losing you know, nutrition, we're not losing uh, herbicides down the catchment. We put everything in place to try and minimise that as much as possible. It is a win-win situation.